<laughs> nice. We sure appreciate all the good singing and playing, guys. It's their ministry. They take it seriously. Hallelujah. And they're not just come to entertain us and they don't come to show off. Right? They come to serve the Lord. And we're thankful for that. Would you turn in the scripture this morning to the book of Ephesians? Well, we keep adding things to the service. <laughs> well, that's all right. We don't come just to say we came. We come to get something done, to accomplish something. Uh, and for visitors, you know, our, our normal time we get out is not noon. <laughs> it's not noon. It'd be closer to 1230, but we don't have an official time. And, uh, you know, if you, if you say, well, hey, you know, I'm, I'm used to 15 minutes and this is all I want. Well, okay, you can leave. We won't be upset with you, you know. Just uh, come back and get some more. Another time. But you could miss something. And, you know, I have seen it again and again that, uh, you know, all of us are operating by faith and we just know in part. And you have to, to come in and focus, whether it's praying or, or reading your word or, or hearing a message or believing for something. We're, we're believing for the word of the Lord. Amen. Right? And so we're endeavoring to get to that point. And you have to stay with it till you get it. Amen. And if you just play with it and just... Quit, you know, don't even try. Well, you'll miss all kind of things. But say it out loud. Stay with it. Stay with it. Till you get it. Till you get it. Say it again. Stay, stay with, with it. it. Till you get it. You hear people say sometimes, well, I, I've been standing and believing for three weeks. <laughs> so, do you have it? Well, we don't see it yet. Well, what do you do now? Stay with it. Stay with it. Stay with it. I'm talking about till you see it. So you feel it. You believe you receive it inside, but you stay in that state of expectation and faith until, as, you see, as long as it takes, through faith and patience or perseverance or persistence, we inherit the promises. We get what we're standing and believing for. Ephesians 4. Anybody know what we're talking about on these weeks? <clears throat> we're talking about growing up. If you didn't bring a Bible with you, hold up your hand and let our ushers get one of ours to you. Use one of these. Turn to Ephesians. Follow along in the Bible. Find the Scriptures. Let your eyes rest on them. Ephesians 3. Anybody been... Uh, what did I say? Yeah, 4 is what we want. Uh I'm thinking about three different things at once here. <clears throat> Ministering is an interesting thing. It really is. Uh, you got you got the Holy Spirit, you got your spirit, and you got your head. <laughs> and there can be numerous things going on at the same time. And what we want in ministry, the, the highest ministry, is when you're ministering beyond your understanding. Amen. Amen. And that, in that case, uh, there have been times I've ministered, and, and many times, and said things I didn't know. I'm learning while I'm speaking. Well, then it wasn't just me. Because if it had been me, I'd have already known what I knew. <laughs> right? Brother Hagen, my father in the faith, used to say that all the time. He said, you learn more listening than you do talking. He said, because you already know what you know. <laughs> That's real simple, but boy, it's, it's true. You already know what you know, so talking, you're usually just saying what you know. But in ministry, there is the ability to speak beyond what you know. And uh, aren't you glad uh, as sit, sitting and listening and hearing? You're not limited to what Keith knows or what any other minister knows. The Holy Ghost is your teacher. And you can get things so far out beyond and besides what was actually said, if you'll have ears to hear it. Well, in Ephesians 4, we've been on this subject for a few weeks now. Let's continue. 
Verse 11 says, He, the Lord, gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints. Why did He give them? Do we still need them? Now, you know, there are some groups that have done away with the five-fold ministry gifts. They emphasize what they call body ministry. And uh, don't acknowledge that they have a head. I'm talking about a human head in their church because they say we all have the Holy Ghost. And all of us are used of the Lord and all of us hear from the Lord. So we just, we just come and see who, who has it that day. <laughs> Y'all are quiet. <clears throat> well, is, is that God's plan? No, he gave what? Apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, teachers. Is everybody an apostle? No. Is everybody a prophet? No. Is everybody an evangelist or pastor, teacher? No, no. There are specific calls and anointings. And what are these for? They are given for the perfecting. What does that word mean? To, to complete to its ultimate end. To, to develop so that it lacks nothing for completion. To be brought to, to full potential, we could say. For the perfecting, the developing, the completion, the maturing of the saints. So then do the saints need the ministry gifts? Yes. Yeah, they do. Do people need a church? Yes. They need a church family. Yes. Do they need to be under ministry gifts where they can get fed? Yes. Where they can get grow? Where they can grow up? Yes, yes they do. All of us do. All of us do. Phyllis and I have been under pastors for years, different churches where we were, and even though we are uh, under shepherd over a family of our own now, we still, we go to meetings and we sit under other ministry gifts and we get fed. Everybody needs to be fed. Amen. Now you need to feed yourself. That's right. That's right. Read that chapter. <laughs> Every day. Monday through Friday. I mean, that's the minimum you do. Everybody clear on that? But if you're not doing that, you're not even trying. Well, I'm too busy. Yeah, you are. You are way too busy, and it ain't good. Your priorities are wrong. Now, people who are serious about God, and people who love God, they read their Bible. They pray. They go to church. They give. They serve. Amen. People who don't are just talking. It's just lip service. Y'all still with me or not? Yes. Y'all are here at church, right? Y'all ought to be saying amen. Yeah. Well, that's us. We're here. Right? <laughs> glory to God. Somebody say glory to God. 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 <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> God gave us ministry gifts. And we still need them today. And uh, we, we shouldn't just make much of the man or the woman, but we should honor the call and the anointing, right? Because it's something God, it's a gift God has given to us to perfect us. He said for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry. Why do you need to be perfected? So you can work. Right? <laughs> Man, we got so many people doing nothing but sitting on their rear. 
It's just a fact. We've, we've got millions and millions and millions of born-again believers that do nothing in the kingdom. Nothing. Nothing. And they think they've hung the moon if they get up in time to make the Sunday morning service and put a dollar in the plate. And will run off any preacher that says they ought to do anything else. If they can. Not this bunch. Not this, that, That's part of growing up. When you grow up, you learn better than that. When you grow up, you don't just sit around and goof off while everybody works. You get up. You put your shoulder to it. You get involved. You pull your weight. You do your part. Right? Mature ones, adults, understand that. And you know, you got a lot of people that are hard workers in the natural, but they've not yet seen they're supposed to be working in the kingdom too. They're supposed to be working in the kingdom. And, oh, have you heard some of these testimonies? How some of these folks, as they begin to put God first, their work gets easier. And they make more money. Oh, if you can learn that principle. When you begin to put God first and you put more e- emphasis and effort and money into the kingdom, you'll find that your natural side of it gets easier and lighter yes. and you make more money. Amen. You do less work. Yes. How many like that idea? Less work, yes. more money. Yes. How you do that? Yes. Seek ye yes. first. Not, not your stuff, but the kingdom of God. And then all these things. He will begin to get involved in adding all that natural stuff to you. If you're putting his kingdom first. Saints perfected for the work of the ministry. And what does that work, what does that uh, cause to happen? The building up of the whole body of Christ. Can you say amen? This is God's plan. This is how it's supposed to work till he comes. Verse 13, till we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect or a full grown, a complete man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. Is he talking about growing up? You can see it all through this, can't you? Perfecting, developing, growing, that we henceforth be no more children. Don't be children anymore, but toss, are tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men and cunning craftiness whereby they lie in wait to deceive, but speaking the truth in love may grow up, may grow up into him in all things which is the head, even Christ." Is it the will of God for us to grow up? Yeah. Do you suppose you could grow up some more? There's no question about it. Just ask your friends and family and neighbors. (laughs) Do you think I could have any room to grow up? (laughs) Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. There's a reason why the Lord calls us His little children. (laughs) Because we is. Right? That's what we are. But we're not to stay that way. We're to grow up and become mature. And how will you be when you grow up? What does it say here? Grow grow up to the fullness of the measure of the stature of Christ. It's like little ones, you know, that come and back up against the, the, you know, where you're marking their height. And they say, I think I've grown some today. Measure me, measure me. And well, what are you measuring yourself by? A lot of times, they'll have daddy's mark over here. Yeah. You know, we'll me- measure daddy and see what, what, he, what he measures to. And we're, what are we shooting for? I mean, why aren't we shooting for, you know, 400 feet? Or why aren't we shooting for three feet? Well, because we got something that, that is an example of maturity and full development. What are we shooting for? Jesus is the the one who is fully developed to completion spiritually. So we're to grow up and be like him. Do you know you got millions of Christians who don't believe they can be like him? They're not even really trying to be like him because they believe it's impossible. 
Oh, well, that's Jesus, Brother Keith. He's, he's God. He's the Son of God. He's perfect. And don't even know what the word means. What does it mean, perfect? Completed. Jesus was born not fully developed as a man. And the Bible said he grew in wisdom and stature. He grew naturally and he, well, how many understand, if you're operate, operating in omniscience, you don't grow in wisdom. Jesus was not operating in the wisdom of the Almighty at three years of age. He had to learn how to talk, just like other little children, right? He had to learn, you know, how to walk. He had to learn all the things that other human beings have to learn. But he grew up, and he didn't just grow up naturally, he grew up spiritually. At age 12, he wasn't just walking and talking, but he was understanding the things of the Father. Right? And he was asking questions that was making the scholars scratch their head. Why? Because he wasn't just growing up. See, so many times people in this world, they just grow up naturally. But then they're 50 years old and their spirit has never been developed. And that's what can be so confusing. You can be born again. But if your spirit's not fed and not exercised, you can be born again 20 years and still be a spiritual infant. And that's confusing to people when they're looking at a 60-year-old body and not realizing that inside they're two. Like a two-year-old. Well, have you ever seen any 50-year-olds act like (laughs) two-year-olds? I'm seeing too much head shaking around people. I've seen that too many times. Well, make sure it wasn't you. Let's grow up. Somebody say, grow up. up. Say it out loud, I'm growing up. up. I am am growing up up into the Lord Lord in all things. things. I am am growing up. up. We're given right here two of the most outstanding keys of how to do it. We studied some of it last week. What does it say? But speaking the truth. Is it important to speak the truth? Yes. Oh, man. We, we got into it, but if you weren't here, uh, get it from the Word Supply or download it for free off the Internet and, and stir yourself up on it. There is no room for deception. There is no room for any falseness. To grow up is to become like the Master. Can you picture Jesus telling a lie? Did you hear what I just said? Can you picture Jesus trying to deceive somebody? I mean, nothing could be further from being like the Lord. Lying and deception is the characteristic of carnal, ungodly people. If they are Christians, they're immature. They haven't grown up in Him at all. Right? And we live in a society that makes excuses for lying. And and, and they're Christians. I've had Christian people in different areas of ministry. You know, uh, look at you if you say anything about lying. So, well, like you've never told a lie. (laughs) Well, not lately. (laughs) And I believe one could go decade after decade and not tell a lie. And I believe it's an awful thing that one ought to hit the floor and repent for if you did tell a lie. And you don't look at, well, I, you know, I only told one this week. Everybody lies all the time. No, they don't. Amen. No, they don't. Get your mind renewed. If you're going to grow up, you have to get rid of lying. And you've got to speak what? Truth. The truth. The truth. And how? In love. In love. Two two areas. Can you see this? How many believe these are two of the big, big components of growing up? What are they? Truth Truth and love. love. Say it out loud. Truth Truth and love. love. Truth Truth and love. You know, when you talk about growing up, a lot of times people equate growing up spiritually with developing in the gifts of the Spirit. And being sensitive to the Lord and being led of the Lord. 
Did you know you can have uh, manifestations of the gifts of the Spirit in your life and be a baby? Oh, yeah. The church at Corinth, they had so much tongues and so much of those things that they had to have instruction, you know, and, and yet he said, you're carnal. You're babies. Right? So just because you got used in a gift of the Spirit doesn't mean you're mature. Think on that for just a moment. Hallelujah. Uh, while I'm thinking about that myself, turn to, uh, well, actually it's in this same chapter. Down a little bit later in the chapter to the 22nd verse. Well, 20th verse. He said, you have not so learned Christ, if so be that you have heard him and have been taught by him as the truth is in Jesus. Say that out loud. The truth is in Jesus. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the light, the life. Uh, Talking about that just a moment ago. One of the things that hinders so many people from operating properly and growing in the gifts of the Spirit is falseness. You, you, if you're going to pretend and put on, you won't have the real thing. It will get in the way of the real thing. You're trying to pretend that you have revelation and you don't. You're trying, trying to pretend that you're anointed and that God's moving on you. And he's not. These things are not imaginary like some people think. They're real. And you either have them or you don't. And you can't produce them just by intense spiritual effort. I'm going to produce a word of knowledge. I'm going to produce a word of wisdom. I'm going to produce, you know. No, it doesn't work like that. Uh, Some of you have heard me tell this, but it will bear repetition. I... I first started helping uh, Brother Hagen, Kenneth Hagen, who's in heaven now. One of the first meetings that he took Phyllis and I on, and uh, it was up in the Northeast, and I, we were just thr- so thrilled to be there. I mean, we, I, I was sitting in the front seat with the driver, and, and Phyllis was sitting with Brother Hagen and, and Mom Hagen in the back. And, man, I just felt like we were in the glory, just riding in the car, and going to the meeting. And they're going to let me speak too. Man. And uh, so, you know, I'm trying to be quiet. Because I realize I'm so young and so dumb. And I just smile a lot. <laughs> and listen. And uh, Bro- Brother Hagen is sitting directly behind me. And this is the big night service. And I mean, we've been having some strong moves of the Spirit. He reaches up. And grabs the back of the seat that I'm sitting in. He's directly behind me. And just starts shaking it like that. And goes, woo, woo, woo. I mean, the car was just quiet. Nobody was saying anything. And Brother Hagin's just just going, woo, woo. And shaking me. I'm shaking like this. (coughs) Excuse me. And he said, boy, you feel that? I thought, oh, God, oh, God. Because I didn't feel a thing. Except the seat shake. And him hollering, I could feel the wind hitting my hair from him hollering and going, woo, woo, woo. It's Brother Hagin. This is my elder. And we all respected his spirituality. And he's going, boy, did you feel that? I thought, oh, God. This is it. This is it. He's going to find out just how unspiritual I am right now. And he probably won't even take me back anymore. I thought, but I can't lie. It's quiet again. I said, uh, no, sir. He laughed. He said, me neither. Just cackle, just laughing. He said, me neither. 
He thought that was so fun. Now, <laughs> what if? See, I was thinking he's going to think I'm unspiritual. Because I didn't feel this. And that this is going to be it. You know, I, I, he may not take me back anymore. But really, it was the other way, wasn't it? What if I'd have said, oh, oh, whoo, yeah, 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 well, now that you mention it, woo, woo, woo. He really would have known how unspiritual. Now, see, we're talking about growing up here, aren't we? What shows more maturity? Trying to work something up? Trying to act like you got something you don't have? You see something you don't see, you perceive something you don't perceive. That is the sign of immaturity, because it's not truth. Oh, do y'all see that or not? Hope you're awake. I hope, I hope you're focusing now. How far do you want to go with God? How far do you want to be used? Of it? People who really are spiritual, they can see falseness. Five miles away. Did you hear me? They can see right through your facade and your show and your hiding and your covering stuff. How many know Jesus, He is the most spiritual of all? And what does the Bible say? All things are open and naked before the eyes of Him with whom we have to do. He sees it all. So if you're smart, what will you do? No front. No falseness, no pretense, certainly no deception, speaking the truth. This is how we're going to grow up, friends. Can you see this? This is how we're going to grow up, speaking the truth. I've been trying to get to this other area, but I'm not released on this this morning. There is so much problems in this area concerning faith. So many people, bless their hearts, are calling it faith, but they're just pretending. What is pretending? Pretending is not truth. So how could it be faith? Is there any deception involved in faith? Is there any falseness or pretense involved in faith? Could be none. Not, not the faith of God. But people play. People pretend. No. Faith, and, and you know, y'all got quiet on that one. People say, well, the Bible said, you know, uh, calling the things as though they're not. No, it didn't. Calling the things that be not. As though they were. Well, same thing. No, it's not. No, it's not. But people have gotten confused on that point, haven't they? And, and you know, that's why some doctors think they have problems with folks like me that preach healing. Because they have, you know, people that believe in healing will go to them. I want them to, you know, give them an examination and help them. But they won't tell them anything's wrong. And so the doctors examine them and poke in and they poke and they go, oh, mm. oh, that hurts. Uh, no, I have no pain. In Jesus' name. What? No, I can't say that. Have no pain. Have no pain in Jesus' name. What did the Bible say? To deny the pain? Hmm? Did it? Did it? A lot of people think it did. It did not. In fact, turn there right now. Turn to Romans 4. Let's go to the Scripture. Read it. What does it say and what does it not say? Anybody remember this? Romans 4. What, what does faith do? What is it? Verse 17? Huh? Romans 4, 17, he said, as it is written, I have made you 
a father of many nations, before him who he believed, even God, God who quickens the dead, and God does what? Calls those things that be as though they're not. That's not what it said. He does what? Calls those things that what? Be not. We're talking about something that's not, as opposed to something that is. God's a creator. He calls things into existence that were not there. And if you take that and twist it around, then you're denying something that is in existence. And calling it faith. And the Lord never told you to do that. That's why so much confusion has erupted in so-called faith circles, this kind of thing. Somebody's three months behind on paying their bills and the creditor calls. And they say, no, no, I have no bills in Jesus' name. (laughs) Rundai, shundai, untie my bow tie. (laughs) And pray in tongues. People think they're spiritual. And they're immature babies trying to play with spiritual principles. Don't even know what they're doing. Do we need to grow up? Hmm? First of all, you should have called them before they had an opportunity to call you. Right? And acknowledge and admit you're late. And apologize for it. And tell them that you did not intend for this to be this way. And that you, you just didn't have it. You don't have it in hand. So people won't even say that. Well, I can't say I don't have it because I, cause I, I, I have it. Well, if you have it, won't you pay the man? <laughs> well, I have it. He wants to see the green. <laughs> if it's faith, it's real. There's no pretending. There's no playing. People stick their head in the sand. The doctor tell them, you got a growth. And so they just want to pretend, I have no growth. And they want to go around and say all day and night, I have no growth. I have no growth. Did the Lord tell you to do that? He didn't tell you to do that. That's you pretending. That's you trying to play. That's you trying to ignore. What did He tell you to do? If there's something there that shouldn't be there, if there's a mountain in your way, what do he tell you to do? Speak to that thing and command that thing to be removed. Right? Well, what if there's something not there that you need to be there? Strength, healing. Then there's something that's not there, call that. Call it. I mean, if the dog's not there and you want to feed him, what do you do? Call him. Spot! Lassie! Huh? Fluffy! You know, I found out something this week. Fluffy had friends. The Bible said that, that uh, he brought of the first fruit, sir. And you look at other scriptures, it talks about multiple ones that he brought. So there was Fluffy... And poofy and ritzy. There was more than one. But whatever is not there, that's the thing he says call into being, which is a completely different thing than looking something in the face and saying you're not here. Now see, there are other religions that do that. And some of them call themselves Christians. And they say, no, the pain's not really there. It's just in your mind. This stuff is not just, it's not really there. It's like one, one uh, fellow was saying, he came into certain pr- practitioners and he was trying to get them to pray. And he said, you know, uh, Grandpa is, uh, is sick. They said, no, he just thinks he's sick. And they said, no, pray, he, he's, he's real sick. And they come back, he's, he said, he, he's, he's sicker yet and you need to pray. And they said, no, he just thinks he is. And finally they said, well, how about your grandpa? You still want us to pray? He said, no, he thinks he's dead now. 
What does he just think he's dead? Or? <laughs> Faith in God is not mind game. It is not pretending. It's real faith and confidence in a real God. People pretend. They try to act like they're at places they're not. Faith is a progressive thing. It's a whole lot like physical exercise. The Bible compares the two, spiritual development to natural development. Well, with spiritual exercise, your body can either do it or it can't. Right? I mean, a lot of times, especially if you used to be in good shape, you like to imagine you're still about where you used to be. But there's one way to get a revelation. Right? Go out and run a few laps. Go out and play a game of b-ball. Right? Go out and run across the bases. And a lot of times you ain't halfway there and you're going, (sighs) well, you might like to think where you are, but you ain't there. Right? I'm, you know, lifting weights. You might like to think you can lift all this weight, but your body's either there or it's not. And there's no need in you loading the bar till it bends and sways. <laughs> and you ain't lifted nothing any, any heavier than a soda can for the last two years. <laughs> it ain't happening. Right? It's just wishful thinking. No, I'm just going to believe it is. I'm going to believe it is. No, you don't. You don't even believe it. You don't believe it. You're just talking. Well, faith is the same way. You've got to find where your confidence is. Faith is not wishful thinking. Faith is not pretending. People talk about, well, why do I have to have the surgery? Can't God, God can do anything, can He? He sure can. But you don't receive according to what God can do. You receive according to your faith. Yeah, God could fix that. But what can you, it's not what God can do. The question is, what can you believe? Where is your faith at? And you're the one that knows that inside better than anybody else. And if you listen to the Lord, He will lead you in line with where your faith is now. And if you use it and follow the leadings, your faith will grow. And it will increase and you'll just come up and come. What used to seem impossible to you, you'll get to the place where it seems easy to you. And reachable to you, but it doesn't happen in 30 minutes and it don't happen overnight. But it doesn't happen either by sitting around pretending. Boy, a lot of people, you know, they talk a good faith talk. Man, they can sit at the restaurant and they can talk faith, moving mountains and and, and finishing the work of God in the earth. But it's just talk. And they're not actually using their faith to do anything. They just talk about faith. Y'all going to help me finish this or not? Huh? How are we going to grow up? Have I changed subjects? Have I lost my way here? No. How are we going to grow up? you got to be honest. Right? I've had people come to me before and want me to get involved in projects and want me to believe for things in the ministry. Well, let's just believe for this. Let's just, let's just claim this. God can do anything. Let's just believe for this. Oh, it sounds grand, grandiose. And they looked shocked when I looked at them and said, No, that's not where my heart is. You don't believe God would want that? Oh, it'd be great. I'd I'd love it. I'd enjoy it. You don't believe God can do that? I know He can. I know He can. Well, then let's believe for it. And really, what they're saying is, you believe for it because they don't. They're trying to talk you into it because they... Huh? You lift the 500 pound barbell. They won't even lay down under it. They don't even work out. But it's, you can talk all you want to, but there comes a moment when you gotta, when you gotta clear that thing. Right? And, And you'll find all these people that love to talk, they're nowhere around.
You got talk and you got faith. You got pretending and you got real faith. Can you say amen? amen? Real faith gets real results. But you got to be honest with yourself. You got to be honest about where you are and where your confidence is and where it's not. And yeah, if you'd have been feeding your faith like you should have been and you'd have been following the leading of the Lord's and exercising your faith like you should have been for the last 20 years, you'd be at a different place right now in your faith. And so would all of us. Amen. Right? But you got to deal with where you are Amen. right now. But you don't want to be depressed about it. Just do what you can where you are right now and you will grow. But can you see it starts with honesty. Amen. Honesty about where we are, where our confidence is. You know, do you believe this? I want you to, every, every time somebody talks to you about something you're believing for, I want you to see me being shook up in that front seat with Brother Hagin. <laughs> Boy, did you feel that? What's the answer? No, I'm sorry, but no. Because a lot of times, neither do they. They ain't feeling anything either. Ah, oh my. Glory to God. Somebody say glory to God again. I had a whole other message beside this. How are we going to grow up? Speaking. The truth in love. I've had people, I think an individual right now, the Lord kept me up half the night praying about something. I didn't know what it was. And finally, I realized I am to go see a certain person. And the Lord told me what was going on with them financially. They, they were in a bad way. And I went to them and tried to talk to them and tried to work the conversation around and even ask them some questions and they never would even acknowledge that they had a problem. I'm believing God. And I'm thinking, yeah, I know it. Yeah, obviously you were because he woke me up in the middle of the night and sent me over here. But wouldn't even acknowledge that they, they needed anything. You couldn't talk to them about it. How are you going to give somebody some money on something and they say, I don't even need it. You see what I'm talking about? And so we've got falseness. We've got pretension. And people calling it faith. And it's keeping people from growing up and developing. No. Does it hurt? Yeah. It hurts bad. Don't do it again. But we don't go around all day saying it hurts, it hurts, it hurts. We call our body healed. We call our body whole. Does it hurt? Yeah, but we're not going to talk about that all day. You got bills? Yeah, I got them. But I call them paid for. Right? What's going on? Yeah, we're dealing with something. But we, we, the greater one's inside us. He always causes us to triumph. Right? Can you say amen? Thanks be unto God. Speaking the truth in love may grow up. What does it say you do like God? He calls those things which be not as though they were. Go with me back to Ephesians and let's, let's finish with this. I feel like I just got started. Amen. Ephesians 4 Verse 15, we're going to grow up by speaking the truth in love. Skip down to verse 20. You've not so learned Christ, if so be that you've heard Him and have been taught by Him as the truth is in Jesus. That you put off concerning the former conversation the old man which is corrupt according to the deceitful lusts. The what? Deceit, the corruption there is according to the deception, deceptive desires, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind, and that you put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness, wherefore, do what? Put away. Putting away 
lying. What is attempts to impress? Attempts to leave people with an impression that something is different than how it really is. It's lying, isn't it? What did he say do with it? Lying? Put away lying and do what? Speak what? Speak the truth. Speak the truth. You know, uh, most of the 12-step programs that have had any kind of success, what's one of the first things they talk to you about? You got to admit you got a problem, right? You got to admit you, you're drinking all day. You're doing drugs. You got to admit. Now, one thing I don't agree is that you confess for the, your, the rest of your life. I'm an alcoholic. I'm a drug addict. I don't agree with that. But there's a lot of good things in, in these, these type programs. I'd just make that, that adjustment right there. But uh, what if a person won't admit? And how many understand that is one of the biggest hurdles that people have, isn't it? Well, I don't have a problem. I can quit this any time. But why did you wake up this morning and didn't even know where you were? Huh? Well, what's, where's the last six hours of your memory? You don't know where you were or what you were doing. Well, and they keep trying to say, I don't have a problem. I don't really have a problem with this. I don't have a problem with gambling. I, I can quit any time I want to. I don't have a problem with this. I don't have a problem. Yeah, you do. And until you acknowledge that you've got this, this issue, this problem, you won't get help. Why would you need grace and help? You don't have a problem. Oh, do you see this, friends? People have used faith as a cover. They should be acknowledging some issues to their friends or to their leaders. Some folks should ask for help. But they want to pretend that there are no problems and act like it and cover it and make it okay by saying it's faith. Well, we're just believing God. Now you got the other end of the spectrum. Some folk, that's all they'd want to do is tell you their problem. Right? They want to tell everybody their problems and all about. Well, no, there's no need in just making yourself look bad for no reason. And there's no need in just airing your faults to the general public. But there are times when you need to admit we've got a problem here. We've, we've had some failures here. We've got some mistakes here. We need help. We need, we need some things done. And you will get grace. Oh, are you listening to me? You will get grace. Whereas if you just keep trying to pretend and hide it and cover it, you won't get grace and you won't get help. The Bible said if you cover your sin, you will not prosper. But if you'll confess it and forsake it, you'll get mercy. Oh, hallelujah. You'll get mercy. And you'll get grace. You'll get help in the time of need. I had an acquaintance of mine. Somebody had done some business with some years past. Called me not long back. And, and they said, you know, I just I hadn't been living right. I, I've been away from God. And I just want to get to God. Man, it made me so glad. I already knew it. I already knew it in my heart. But until they would say that and open the door, I couldn't use my faith. In that specific area, we couldn't, we couldn't get it right. Because it wasn't just them coming to me. They came to God. Right. They told Him that. They opened the door to Him. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Do you see this? Yes, Can you say amen? amen? Can you see that this is part of growing up? Yes. Even when it's uncomfortable. Yes. Even when you'd rather not deal with it. I mean, it's, it's so much easier to run and hide than it is to step up and look the thing in the eye and admit it and say, yeah, this is a problem. We messed up and we need help in this. And it, it takes maturity. It takes strength, doesn't it, to acknowledge, to admit. 
to allow. It's not faith to pretend. It's not faith to cover. And if you live that way, you will not grow up. But this bunch is growing up. It's an honest bunch. Right? (laughs) They'll look you in the eye. If they didn't feel it, they didn't feel it. Right? Right? Let me tell you, the better answer would be, should I be feeling it? Help me. Because I don't feel a thing. Right? You're open. You're teachable. But you wouldn't tell a lie for any amount of money or for any reason in the world. And you're not going to try to pretend that you're somewhere that you're not. Right? You need to be able to tell in front of your other friends. Well, I, I, we're just not there today. Let's go in here and eat at this restaurant. Come on, go shopping with me. Have you ever, y'all got a few more minutes for me to talk about this? Do you see what I was talking about earlier? Sometimes it just takes a little time for us to believe God and get to the place where the Holy Ghost now is really putting His finger on specific things. Can you see that? If I get in too big of a hurry or if you get in too big of a hurry, we miss stuff. There are times you just need to say. Now, I know there was a time in Phyllis in my life. Where other, we're around ministers that have been in the ministry longer than us, or people that were more financially stronger than us, and they're going to go do this and that. And we felt, we felt pressured. We felt like we had to go along, or we had to be a part, and you didn't want to say you didn't have the money, because that's like, you don't have faith. And if you feel like that and act like that, all it shows is that you are immature. Because now we've grown up enough to the the point where we're not intimidated. I don't care how much money you got. Right? And it's not because we're multi-billionaires, because we're not there yet. But we've learned enough to know what is real faith and what is not. What is play and where we are and where we're not. And there are times we say, well, you know, guys, we're not going to do that. We, that's, we're not there. That's not where we are. We're not prepared to do that. Doesn't mean it's wrong. Doesn't mean you shouldn't be doing it. You know, maybe by next year or the next five, we'll be there. Where we can, but we're not there today. And it would be foolish. It would be falseness. It would be immaturity. It would be pride for us to try to pretend that we are. To impress who? Huh? And get our finances messed up. And just struggle and struggle and have to pray and, and repent and ask God to forgive you for being ignorant. And, and for what? Why did you waste that money? Because of pride. Because of trying to show off. Right? Ladies, guys too, you're out shopping. Don't let somebody goad you into trying to keep up with them and spend money you don't have. Huh? Go in shops and, and spend money on one dress or one outfit that, would, that you'd have normally bought ten with. And you're not there and the Lord didn't lead you to do it. In fact, He was checking you the whole time. But you wanted to act like you're where they are. They're probably not where they're trying to act like they are. I found that many times. Many times. I I remember one time years ago crying on a particular situation because I wasn't able to keep up with somebody in an area and do some of the things that they were doing. And I thought, man, they're just so far out beyond me. and I couldn't do it. I couldn't even try to do it. And, And... Some years later, I found out that while I was crying that day, I was in better shape than they were. And just didn't know it. They were just talking a good game. Are y'all with me on this now? How are you going to grow up? You got to stop pretending. You got to stop playing games. Acting like you know so much of the Word and you don't. Acting like you know so much about God and you don't. Acting like you're so spiritual and you're sensing so much and you're having so much. Acting like you've got faith beyond... That is so immature. Right? 
acting like you got money and you can run and keep up with this one and keep up with that one. And, and then, you know, there's all kind of fights. I mean, dear me, the fights between husbands and wives over this stuff. You did what? You went where? You spent what? Why? You knew he had to buy groceries. You knew he had to pay the rent. Hmm? And yet, this woman thinks she's more spiritual than her husband. Did you hear me? No. Be pretending is not spiritual. Boy. A little bit touchy there. No. Be honest. Go, go, no, I, um, I have talked to my husband about that. I ain't saying that. Why not? No, I'm gonna, I'm, no, I'm gonna go, my wife and I are gonna talk about that before we do that. Oh, I ain't saying that. They'll think, you know, she's got me, uh, under her thumb. They'll think, they'll think, well, you're so insecure, you don't know who you are. You don't know what you are. So concerned about what everybody else thinks. Right. No, you need some boys. Nah, boys, I, I'm not going to get involved with that. I, I don't have money to spend on that right now. That ain't faith. Oh, yes, it is. How you know? The, you know, you, did you hear that testimony Friday night, if you didn't, about that lady who was down in Mexico? She didn't spend her money to buy water because she wanted seed to sow. Went thirsty through the day. My, my, my. So people don't know what you're doing. You may say, well, I, you know, I'm, no, I'm not going shopping. They don't, they might not know. Why? You might be sowing that instead of shopping it. Now we're really talking about spirituality. Can you say amen? Stand up on your feet, please. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Glory to God. Go ahead. Hallelujah. We're going to receive communion this morning. Jesus is the Word, the truth made manifest. We're going to take the cup and take the bread over the truth, over honesty. No falseness, no playing games. We're going to be honest. Right? We're going to be open. No pride, no trying to impress, no playing games. We're going to be honest. We don't have to keep up with anybody except the Holy Ghost. Right? And no need for us to feel slighted or inferior to somebody else. If we'll believe God and sow our seed, we'll get there. Right? Right? might take a few days or weeks or months, but we'll get there. But we're not going to be foolish and act like we're at a place we're not. Pray it out loud. Father God, Father God enlighten, my eyes, enlighten my eyes. Show me, show me where, I am, where I am in my faith, in my faith. Right, now, right now in every area. In every area. Show, me show me what is real and what is pretend. What is faith and what is fake? There is no fake in you. There's no falseness in you. There's no shadow of turning. Only light, reality, truth. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Just praise Him a little bit. Father, we bless you today. We thank you for helping us to grow up. Grow up. Grow up. Grow up. Hallelujah. Say it out loud. I will speak the truth at all times. No deception will come out of my mouth. No lie or falseness. Across my lips, by the grace of God, 
I speak the truth only in love and I'm growing up. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You can be seated. Ushers, would you come and let's get ready to serve the people. Keep your eyes open until you're served and just sing with the guys or, or wait on the Lord. Let's honor the body and the blood of the Master this morning. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. And what can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. And oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. No other fount I know. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. And what can wash away? Oh
should not partake and not be involved in this you, even if you've missed it terribly or been away from the Lord you can repent right here right now in your seat and receive nobody miss out hallelujah okay wash is white as hallelujah keep singing all the land Jesus, oh, the blood of Jesus, oh, the blood of Jesus, it washes white as snow. Thank you for the blood. Thank you for the blood of Jesus Christ. Thank you for the blood. Oh, thank you. Thank you for the blood. says I received of the Lord what I delivered to you that the Lord Jesus the same night in which he was betrayed he took bread when he had given thanks he broke it and said take eat this is my body which is broken for you do this in remembrance of me we read he said uh, not to lie one to another but speak the truth he said, for we are members one of another. Lying to a brother or sister is lying to yourself. We're members one of another. When one hurts, he said, it hurts us all. We discern the physical body of the Lord this morning, broken for us. He took our sicknesses. He carried our pains. By his stripes, we're healed. But we also 
discern the spiritual body that makes that's made up of all the people, the members of the body of Christ. Hold up the bread. Said out loud, I discern, I discern. and I value, I value. The, body the, the body of the Lord, the body of the Lamb, the body of broken, broken. So, I so I could be whole. I also discern, I also discern. and respect, and respect. The, body the body of Christ. Every member, every, member. every part. I keep the law of love, the the love commandment, commandment. to do no ill, ill. to do no harm harm. to any part part. of the body of Christ. Christ. Thank you, Lord, Lord. for the body. body. Break your knee. Thank you, Lord. We receive, Lord, healing and wholeness in our body. We receive healing and wholeness of relationships, rifts in the body. We ask for the healing anointing, that there may be restoration of brothers and sisters in fellowship, churches and ministries, ministers and believers. We claim and we receive healing, restoration of rifts in the body. In Jesus' name. If you agree with it, say amen. So be it. The scripture says, after the same manner also he took the cup. When he had supped, he said, this cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death till he come. Hold up the cup, say it out loud. I am redeemed redeemed. by the blood of the Lamb. Spotless lamb, lamb. perfect blood, blood. I'm forgiven, forgiven. all my sins, sins. washed away away. by the blood, blood. I'm made righteous, righteous. I'm made holy, holy. I'm made clean clean. and pure pure. by the blood blood. of the lamb, lamb. Hallelujah. hallelujah, glory to God, take and drink. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Master. Thank you, Master. Thank you, Master. Glory to God. Glory to God. Everybody stand. Let's begin to lift up our hands and give thanks. Lord, we thank you for the sacrifice of your body and your blood. Thank you that you bought us and you paid for us. Thank you that you obtained an eternal redemption for us. Spirit, soul, and body. We are redeemed. We are free. Thank you, 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 thank you. Oh, thank you, thank you. Oh, thank you, thank you. Thank you, Lord. Oh, I thank you, Master. I thank you, Father. I give you glory. I praise you. Praise you, praise you, praise you, praise you. Oh, hallelujah. Glory to God. Now, if you did that in faith, you can be born again. While you did that, while you acknowledged faith in the blood, 
If this is the first time you've confessed Jesus as Lord, you ought to tell somebody about that before you get away. There will be people standing right here at the front ready to talk to you and rejoice with you if you've given your heart to the Lord this morning or if you've come back home to the Lord or if you've got questions about any of these things, come. Don't just walk out the back, come and, and talk to some of these folks up here. And, uh, if you're watching by internet or TV, email us, call us, write us, let us shout with you and rejoice with you because it is true. He has redeemed us and He set us free. Free from sin. Hallelujah. <clears throat> no more lying. No more deception. No more pretending. We can be free. And we can be happy with each other. Right? Not be embarrassed to let people know where we are right now. Because if they're not there, they used to be. Right? If they did grow out beyond it, they, they know right where it is. They were there themselves. Right? And most folk are like you. They're trying to grow up from the same place. So, no, let's enjoy each other's company. Let's, let's fellowship. And yeah, we, we, we got something we're reaching for. We, we've got a high place. But let's enjoy every step between here and there. Right? Let's shout. Let's enjoy every day. Well, let's don't put, put our shouting off till we get to the highest thing. No, let's enjoy every step, every rung between here and there. Can you say amen? amen. Glory be to God. What are we going to sing as we go? We're free. Let's sing it as we go. Well, I'm free, free, free. Oh, yes, I'm free, free, free. The sun has set me free. Set me free.